It's the biggest crowd I can remember. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the American Legion Post 108, I'd like, I'd like to welcome you to our Memorial Day ceremonies. Um, we will start with the uh, men making music is providing their music today. And Tom Fisher is going to come up, uh, the director, and say a few words. And uh, they will have a presentation of our colors. And when the music starts, please rise for the presentation of the colors. Tom? Thank you, sir. It is meet and right that we as citizens of the United States of America should be here present today to honor those that have passed on to their reward serving our country and those that are still with us that are our veterans in the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, and the military services. We, as far as the men making music, are truly honored to be asked by the military of this town and this county to be able to sing with you and for you this day. Thank you for asking us to be here, and God bless America. Please rise for the pres presentation of the colors. In the pledge of, no, excuse me. Uh, we'll now have the convocation by Reverend Steve Reeves from Cartuga J Community. Would you bow with me? Eternal God or Heavenly Father, we do come before you with a thankful heart today for the beauty of this day that you've given us to come together as a community. A community, Lord, that it blesses our heart to know has continued to be very patriotic, recognizing the contributions of the many who have served in our armed forces over the years, and especially on this day, Lord, the memories of those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for this great land that you have provided for us to live and prosper in. We do thank you, Lord, that we continue to have those willing to commit themselves. And at this very moment in time, there are those in harm's way around this world from our great land. And we pray for them and lift them up for your protection today. We pray for their families that you'd be an encouragement and a, and a comfort and a strength to them in their family members' absence. And Lord, we do pray for the comfort of hearts of those right now whose heart and mind is stirred because they have a loved one who lost their life while serving and trying to protect and promote the goodness and grace of this land you've given us. So now, Lord, we do come before you and we bow humbly. And we ask you to walk with us in the steps you have for us in the future. And may we always be a country that would stop and pause and remember. In your Son and our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we'll have making men, men making music, uh, saying America the Beautiful. And we would like the audience to sing along with us. Please remain standing and uh, we'll have the uh, presentation of the colors from the Sons of the American Revolution. They have a First Continental Army's battle flag or commonly known as the Betsy Ross flag. And we'll have some remarks from Tom Long after the colors are posted. Be seated. As the commander says, I'm Tom Long from Natahala. I'm currently president of the six county regional chapter of the Sons of the American Revolution, which meets bi monthly here in Franklin. My compatriot in the Continental Line uniform of his ancestor is our immediate past president, President Kenton David from Highlands. As best as my research could determine, I'm wearing the dress blue uniform of my patriot ancestor from Halifax County, who served as Commissary General of North Carolina. The Sons of the American Revolution is a lineal male society whose members have traced their, their ancestors back to a revolution patriot. Our pledge at the opening of every meeting is as follows. We descendants of the heroes of the American Revolution, who by their sacrifices established the United States of America, reaffirm our faith in the principles of liberty and our constitutional republic and solemnly pledge ourselves to defend them against every foe. On this Memorial Day, I want to share with you 
some of the very first American warriors to sacrifice all for their country. And it was before we had a country. He was giving their lives for an idea that we could and should be an independent nation of free, self-governing people. From the settlement of Jamestown in 1607, for the next nine generations, 168 years, Americans had been increasingly used making their own laws and rules and determining the punishment for those who broke them. And in the last two decades prior to the revolution, King George had increasingly sought to reverse this self-government through taxes, intimidation, outright kidnapping, and enslaving our people. After effectively dismantling our colonies, congresses, and removing our judges, and in effect imposing martial law in the New England colonies, we had had enough. And so on April the 18th, 1775, our forefathers picked up their muskets and marched to intercept a contingent of the mightiest power on the planet at Lexington and Concord. Eight years and four and a half months later, the revolution ended officially with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on September 3rd, 1783. It would take another five and a half years before Americans had a federal constitution to govern the 13 colonies and elect Washington our first president on April the 30th, 1789. So contrary to the belief of today's school children that the United States sprang, sprang into existence on July the 4th, 1776, a long, hard, deadly conflict that saw 8,000 killed outright on the battlefield, 17,000 die of their wounds from the battlefield, another 25 to 35,000 die from disease and imprisonment in the service of a future country and the idea of a free and independent republic. To put this in perspective, the American war losses establishing our country, excluding slaves and loyalists, were three to five percent of the population, equivalent to 10 million of today's population. Further, if we take the most conservative estimate of our losses, 50,000, that would be the equivalent of losing five million in World War II instead of 350,000. So as we gather today to honor our country's war dead, let us remember those brave patriots who picked up a gun, followed Washington to establish our country over a period of 13 years, nine and a half months. God bless America. Thank you, Tom. Um, I bring greetings from Post 108 in Franklin. I'm Scotty Thomas, commander. And uh, after the meeting, or after the ceremonies today, you all are invited by the Post for a barbecue. I've got something I would like to share with you. Scripture tells us that there is no greater love than a man laying down his life for his friends. The men and women that we honor and remember today have proven that they are not just friends to us as Americans, but they are friends to the men and women in the countries around the world. One such man, Sergeant William Stacy, epitized what is meant to be a non-commissioned officer in the United States Marine Corps. He was described by a journalist embedded in Afghanistan as having a bright and concentrated flame within him that could cut through stone he spelled death and failure for his enemies and give life to his comrades. On January the 23rd, 2012, the 23-year-old Redding, California, already on his fourth deployment in Afghanistan, was killed by an IED blast while on patrol. Like many going into combat, Sergeant Stacy wrote a letter to be read in the event of his, he gave his life. I'd like to share that letter with you now. My death did not change the world, Sergeant Stacy wrote. It may be tough for you to justify its meaning at all, 
but there is a greater meaning to it. Perhaps I did not change the world, but there will be a child who will live because men left the security they enjoyed in their home country to come to his. And a child will learn in the new schools that have been built. He will walk in the streets, not worried about whether his leader's henchmen are going to come and kidnap him. He will grow to a fine man who will pursue every opportunities his heart could desire. He will have the gift of freedom, which I have enjoyed for so long. If my life buys the safety of a child who will one day change this world, then I know that it was worth it all. Ladies and gentlemen, I would argue that the sacrifice made by Sergeant Stacy and countless other American heroes have indeed changed the world. There is a simplistic and naive belief that war does not solve anything. I suppose that's true unless you count winning the American independence, the preservation of the Union, the elimination of slavery, the toppling of fascist and imperialist and terrorist regimes. Americans must remember that freedom isn't free. In fact, it is only possible because our fallen heroes have paid its high price, a price paid which enables us to have ceremonies like this across our great land. Thank you. At this time, we'll have... <laughs> At this time, we'll have Dennis Curry with some remarks from the commander of the VFW Post with some remarks. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Dennis Curry, incoming commander of the VFW Post here in Franklin. I don't have a written statement. I'm just going to wing it. It's good to see all, all of you that's turned out today, the young people, the very young people, being taught what freedom's about. Without the sacrifice of our forefathers and our young men and women today, we wouldn't be here. We might be doing something else as far as what the state would have us to do. We are great. I'm grateful for this country because we can I'm freezing up. We, we, we can exercise our rights to speak our minds in public or about our elected officials without any problem. We hear people grumbling about what this nation does and it's this and it's that. They should thank God that they got this nation to live in because a lot of the rest in the world would not put up with what they complain about. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here again. And may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Dennis. Now we'll have Frank Cucumber, the commander of the Vietnam Veterans of America. To all veterans from all services, and ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to be here, and uh, we're here for noble cause. We're here to thank the veterans who gave the ultimate surprise to the, our enemy. We lost a lot of people in this country, and we give thanks to them, for they paid a high price. And to the kids, I understand some of them. I met some of them over the weekend. They have no idea what Memorial Day is. And the parents are not teaching them, I don't think. It's just another day off from school from what I've heard. And but it is a pleasure to be up here to give thanks to the, all the wars that was fought. And we have, we are here to enjoy the freedom because of the price the veterans paid in foreign lands. I'm proud to be here amongst with all these veterans. And It's 
it's very good to be amongst all the that we are here to be able to speak out against all the adversaries that we have in this day and time. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, at this time, we'll have Tom Mintz, commander of the Marine Corps League, uh, for a few remarks. We have winds blowing on this thing. Last year when I came up here and talked, I was the last one just like I am today. And uh, I had to wing it totally because everybody already talked about what I was going to talk about. But today, I've, I've, got, I've got a few little things here that I can say. And um, one is Memorial Day is a day that we pay respects for those who, according to Abraham Lincoln, gave their last full measure of devotion. It is through their actions that we enjoy the blessings of liberty. It is through their tears of them and their family that we have the freedoms that we have often taken for granted. We shall find peace when we shall hear the angels sing and we shall see the sky sparkling with diamonds. <coughs> Founding fathers over 200 years ago made a declaration of independence. That declaration of independence, every one of them that signed it, they signed it under threat of death. And when 1882 came and they had the Constitution, everybody who has ever joined the military has sworn an oath to that Constitution. And I, for one, won't forget that oath until the day I'm put under. A strong military has always been the deterrent to forces coming, uh, bother, people bothering us beside the two oceans. But uh, we must be a people that will continue to protect our shores. And Thomas Jefferson said that the tree of liberty from time to time must be refreshed with the blood of patriots and tyrants as they are natural fertilizer. Free people generally step forward to protect our freedom as vets have done in the past. We call upon citizens in this nation to come forward to continue the sacrifice that began with the revolution. Ever since those shots were fired at Lexington and Concord, vets have been coming forward to protect this nation. And people have to remember that freedom is worth fighting for and is worth dying for. When Benjamin Franklin said that a person or a man who would sacrifice freedom for a little bit of safety deserves neither freedom nor safety because freedom will give you everything you need to have. And we God bless every man that runs toward the sound of fire because these are the guys that allow you to stay like you are today. One more thing I would like to add. Uh, Scotty didn't, didn't say this, but over at the American Legion, there's a jar for donations. Uh, these donations are gonna go to the people that were ravaged out in Oklahoma City. Uh, and uh, I, I, for one, got an email from a commander of the Marine Corps League out in Oklahoma, in Moore, Oklahoma, and one of his people, a young sergeant by the name of Rock, believe it or not. Wife and three kids, they, he came home, everything was gone. Everything was gone, just a pile of rubble. And uh, so if we can uh, go to the Legion for lunch today and enjoy our lunch, if we can put forth a little effort to give to these folks, and that would be really a nice thing, and I'm sure they would appreciate it. So that's all i got to say. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Tom. At this time, Neil Riendo will come and uh, talk a little bit about our Memorial Park. Thank you, Scotty. I'm Neil Riendo. I'm the chair of the Veterans Memorial Committee. How's everybody like your memorial? Yeah. We're proud of it. Uh, today we honor those brave men and women who have given their lives in defense of this country. Part of this memorial is dedicated to these men and women. Down by the timeline of, of wars, you'll see bricks that lie on the sidewalk down there. These represent folks who died from Macon County in all the wars. Uh, there are folks, including my wife, 
who believe the sale of bricks was just for veterans who have passed. This is not so. The bricks, like our entrance sign says, are for all veterans. You can honor your veteran living or dead by purchasing a brick to help support your memorial. You can pick up a brick form at the kiosk at the entrance uh, or go online to veteransmemorialmakingcounty.org and it's helped support your memorial and keep it looking good like this. And thank you all for coming and God bless America. Thank you, Neil. Our speaker today is a native of Kartuka Jay community that I've known for over 50 years. In October of 66, he joined the Army after graduating from high school. He's a Vietnam veteran who served two tours of duty with the 173rd Airborne Infantry Brigade. He is the recipient of two Purple Hearts and numerous other awards. After finishing his military service, he entered Gardner Webb College and graduated in May of 1973. He taught in Kings Mountain School System for eight years. In 1981, he came back home and has been employed until his retirement by the Macon County School System. He retired in 2010 as an educator for 37 years, 29 of those years in the Macon County School System. And for the last 21 of those years, he served as principal of Franklin High School. He's presently a member of several organiza community organizations, among which is our American Legion. In 2010, the citizens of Macon County elected him to the Macon County Board of Education. In October of 2012, he was sworn in for his second term as a member of the Southwestern Community College. Please join me in welcome Mr. Gary Shields. Thank you, Scotty. I want to say thank you to all the veterans that are here. I'd like to have a shout out for Nat Henry. I understand he's in the hospital. He's one of our POWs. And I just want Nat to know that we're thinking about him today. Uh, Nat, we hope everything is working for you and you get better you can join back up with us. Memorial Day involved from Decoration Day in 1967. Both holidays were set aside for the remembrance of the men and women who gave their lives. As I reviewed the history of Decoration Day, Memorial Day, and how Decoration Day evolved into Memorial Day in 1967, I felt something of a loss. I began today in remembering the men and, men and women who gave their lives for this great day. We may be losing that. In 1967, Memorial Day was designated to be celebrated on May the 30th, but later was changed to the last Monday in May. I've worked through the name changes and date changes, but what stood out was the Memorial Day's real meaning may be lost by marketing schemes. Promoting the day is a time for celebrating the beginning of summer. Promoting the day is a time for celebrating a long weekend, a sporting event, or a big sale. But with all these mixed feelings, we are here for the right reasons. We are here to remember our fellow veterans who gave their all. Then as I thought more about the, the word Memorial Day, I asked myself if we were to remember the men and women veterans who died, what did they die for? Then I looked at the word memorial. I brought out the M in memorial. I said the M in memorial stands for the million plus men and women who have died for our country since the Revolutionary War. And trying to find the answer to what did they die for, 
I thought about my father who was a rural Baptist minister here and I've reflected back to my youth. I can remember the activities that, that took place on Decoration Day or Memorial Day, usually on the Sundays, when the cemeteries were blessed and the graves were decorated and flowers and waving flags were abundant. Families and friends rekindled old friendship. As a youngster, one to walk among the dead and read the inscriptions. You would see World War I, you'd see World War II, Korea, and every once in a while you'd see a stone that may have the inscription something about the Civil War. But on these inscriptions, when you looked at it, you looked at the date they were born. Then you looked at the date they died. And a lot of times, they were late teens, early 20s, or late 20s. They'd served their country, and now they were there in the cemetery. As I listened and looked around, you could sense and see that the deaths of former veterans had a lasting effect, not only for the families, but for the community. A void was obvious. Then I looked at the word E in memorial. E stands for eternity. I used to try to wrap my thinking around this word eternity. I remember as a child, I'd lay, in, lay down in my front yard and look up in the sky and look at the clouds. I could kind of see that distance. But when I looked beyond the clouds into that blue space, I couldn't, I couldn't comprehend it. So eternity is something that's there. I used to try to think about all the people who have died. And my mind all went for time and distance. That's where my capsule was. Since 1913 to today, 2013, we've lost over 600,000 men and women veterans have died due to war. If you equate that out, that averages out to about 6,000 men and women dying each year. Many of you veterans have seen death, and over time I've come to terms with there is no coming back. That's what eternity is. A loss of life affects not only the community but the immediate family, who, like veteran families, grieve in silence. And on days like today, we do consciously remember our buddies and loved ones that, as we search for what did they die for, daily we still try to justify the what and forever try to comprehend the word eternity. And in some magic way, we store the word in the depths of our thoughts because we know that eternity is forever. The second M in memorial. Many of us, prior to our military service, had not interacted with people of the minority race. I'm going to say of color. We viewed many persons of another race in a stereotype manner. As we viewed many persons of another race, we were evolved. The military experience allowed us to evolve as team members. And that a team did not come in one color, and today, one gender. We all have our cultural experiences, and the military allowed many of us to evolve beyond color barriers. When viewing another of a different race, on this date, we need to remind ourselves that people of color and the women veterans also gave their lives for the many freedoms we enjoy today. Today, I fondly remember my Hawaiian buddy, Sergeant Manicut. I remember PFC Crow and PFC Trango, American Indians. Sergeant Mendoza, PFC Martinez, Martinez were my Hispanic memories. PFC King and Specialist Williams and PFC Foster, who were African Americans. I remember.
seeing the, the 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 one person that I remember most is the burned image I have and he was carried before me and I asked the medic is he okay and the medic said he's dead the burned image I have as he was carried before me was seeing his name label on his shirt. When one was new in country, you were issued a pair of pants and a shirt with the name label. After days in the field, your pants and shirts lose all of its identities of name and rank. But seeing that name label fostered, I still see it today. That's what haunts me the most is in short time he had been in country because his name label was still intact and so few of us knew him so for me today is a remembrance of Foster and all the other Fosters the O in memorial stands for one and I pledge allegiance today we said one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all the R in memorial stands for rights, the Bill of Rights. They were part of the Constitution and it allowed us to have the freedoms of religion, or speech, or press, right to assemble peacefully, petition the government. All of these were as part of our Bill of Rights. But most of all, in our amendments today is the right to vote. The right for all of us to be able to vote. Then in, then in 1789, the Constitution of the United States was ratified and this document was the supreme law of the land. You have to understand this. The Constitution was our governing board. But then again, the I and memorial stands for independence. And we've already been told the Declaration of Independence was, was prior to our Constitution, but the Declaration of Independence was developed as a moral compass for this country. Declaration of Independence was used with the Constitution as our moral compass. And Thomas Jefferson wrote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by the Creator with a certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And we know that together, the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution are America's founding documents. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and the Declaration of Independence is the moral compass for the formation of our Constitution with their unalienable rights. The A in memorial stands for all. There is no I in team. It is a must for all of us to be able to talk, work together in a civilized manner in order to have a successful community, state, country, and a global conscience for the betterment of all in our future generation. Let us never forget, all gave some and some gave all. The L in memorial stands for love. John 15, 13, the barn says, Life is the most valuable object we possess. And when one is willing to lay down that for his friends or his country, it shows the utmost extent of love. The love of God, your fellow man, your country, our heritage, sacrifices of our citizens, and most of all our men and women veterans, past, present, and future should never be forgotten. The D in day stands for death. We are here today in remembrance of the men and women who served and died for our freedoms. Nathan Hale was a soldier in the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War and was captured by the British and hanged for being a traitor. History reports that his last words were, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. That is the pride and sacrifice we're remembering today. The A and A stands for American. 
It is time for us to reconfirm our belief in America. Do not be ashamed to say I'm an American. Do not be ashamed to say I'm an American veteran. I'm proud to be an American and the freedoms we enjoy today are from our veteran brothers and sisters who have gone before us. The Y in day stands for yesterday. Time fleets us. One cannot call back yesterday. Yesterday is an opportune time for learning for today and tomorrow. If we can forget yesterday, we will only repeat our past and then our children and future generations will have to bear a burden we have yielded to them. In closing, Memorial Day is a time set aside to remember our men and women veterans who gave their all. And each day you walk in the freedoms of what they died for. They died and served as an eternal flame, not only for this country, but for the world. They died all to realize that all races are to be recognized as part of the American freedoms we enjoy today. They died so we can have, as one nation under God, individuals with liberty and justice for all. They died for the moral compass the Declaration of Independence declares all men are created equal. They died so the U.S. Constitution and attached amendments still serves as a protector of our legal rights. Our veteran men and women have died on foreign soil so others can live freely. Instead of us screaming in the dark, let the living today light a candle. For it is up to us to not let our men and women veterans to have died in vain. God bless the USA. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Our honor guard, who, who will perform uh, three volleys of the rifle in a minute, I just would like to say, we were, is made up of uh, members of the VFW, Marine Corps League, and the American Legion. And we were selected this year as the number one post in the state by the American Legion. So we've got something to be proud of. Right there. But, uh, we'll have three volleys of the rifle for our fallen comrades and the playing of taps. Commander, verify. Give us three volleys of the rifle for our fallen comrades. At this time, uh, Louise Walmart, President of the American Legion Auxiliary, Ladies Auxiliary, and Francis Crisp of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary will pre present a wreath for our fallen veterans.
Thank you, ladies. At this time, we will have our national anthem with um, making men, men making music, and uh, the flag will go to full mass. that has been risen, raised now is, has flown over Arlington Cemetery. I forgot to say that beforehand. Um, now we will raise the rest of the service flags and the men making music will perform Marching with the Heroes.
gentlemen. That concludes our ceremonies today. Please join us over at the post for a free barbecue lunch. Thank you. Hi, baby. I mean, can he speak, though? I'm just over here. The ceremony. I thought you were going to meet me here. Oh, I'm sorry. You ain't remember. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. What goes back? Hey, yeah. now this is the southern guy. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 He's in laws. He's five hundred dollars. We put up rosemary. Then we're going to the post office. We've already got the order. Got the bag. Get the going. No, you're going to meet me here. I screwed up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So just meet me at the other than me.